Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. And a 2021 Mercedes AMG E63 S wagon. So what's new for 2021, you might ask? How about a revised front end? Bigger radiator, vertical slats on this front intake, bigger Mercedes badge, so people really know what's coming at them from behind. Revised air intakes down in the bottom that Mercedes claims will reduce lift over the front axle. We've also now got LED headlights and taillights. What hasn't changed for 2021 is the heart of this car. And that is a four liter twin turbo V8 good for 603 horsepower and 627 pound-feet of torque. And on this particular car, running to all four wheels, unless you're in drift mode. Here we are, behind the wheel of the 2021 Mercedes-AMG E63 S wagon the grocery getter king the top of the pile except there is now competition from the likes of audi in the rs6 so mercedes decided to refresh the 2021 new front end rear end side haunches they also made some changes inside some pretty dramatic changes there's this widescreen cockpit it is two 12.3 inch screens all behind one big sheet of glass. It kind of looks like an iPad that's been stretched out and stuck in the dash. It looks really nice. Some of these screens like this look aftermarket. They look like they're tacked on or whatever. This one looks really nice. I wish, however, you could fold this end out a little bit and cant it more towards the driver or maybe have a tilt feature so you could tilt it up because this is a little, the way I sit behind the wheel, the screen is a little off of my vision. Other than that, it's really nice. It's, it's very attractive and customizable, just like almost everything in this car. So you can change the views of the gauges from a classic to a sport and like a track and everything and really cater the car, at least the appearance of the car, to your tastes. Then you've got the new updated MBUX system, the infotainment system, all spread out over here on this side of the widescreen cockpit. So there's so many different settings and so many different things and ways to change the setup of the look and the appearance and what you're seeing over here, what you're seeing over here that I really should pull over. Okay, now that I'm in a safe spot, I can show you all of these different things. So you've got your nav, of course, radio, and then of course you've got media comfort. So you got seat kinetics, Heating balance, where do you want the heat? Up towards the top, if you want it all at the bottom, if you want it in the middle. Then you can do ambient lighting. You can change the color of the lighting that's quite beautiful all along this gorgeous dash. You can have it as an animation. You can have it as a greeting when you get into the car. You can change the brightness and how bright you want it and where you want it bright. Then there's the track pace only on closed off race tracks away from public. So this will actually do timers and all kinds of things when you're at the racetrack. In a station wagon. Then there's the AMG Performance. We've got a G meter over here. This will actually show where your acceleration, which wheels are pulling and, and pushing and braking zones. And this will show the suspension and sort of what your compression is on your suspension. You can show the engine and the performance of the engine. You can check your fuel consumption, and then you can change different things in the select here. And then there's the different settings for the car itself. Driver's assistance, automatic seat adjustment, panel heating, so when you put on the heated seats, it actually heats your armrest on the door and in the middle here. The belt adjustment, if you want it to give you a little hug when you get in. Acoustic lock, if you want it to beep when it locks. It, it's just amazing, everything that fits in to one vehicle. All right. Back to the road. So, a million different settings for that. On top of that, there's several different settings for the car. There's an air suspension, which is tunable depending upon which drive mode you're in. 
You can change drive modes with a little button down here that says dynamic and you can just flip them here and it pops up on the center screen and kind of go back and forth or better you can use this new steering wheel that's flat bottomed and very nice to touch it's a combination of alcantara and leather and use this little twisty knob down here so i'm in comfort right now and then we can switch one over to the right and we go to sport and then we go to sport plus and then we go to race race so on top of those modes, you can go in and kind of preset how you want the suspension, how you want the throttle response, how you want the weight of the steering and make it in individual mode. And it's really nice because down the right hand side of the second screen over here, it will show you what everything is set at. And you can go to slippery where it reduces power and changes traction and everything to make sure that it will work well. In comfort mode, the E63 has cylinder deactivation so it'll go down to a four cylinder instead of an eight cylinder and that's supposed to make the car more efficient now we've been driving this car for a few days and filled up the tank today and checked our mileage and i can tell you that even with this new somewhat revised body that's a little more aerodynamic and cylinder deactivation we still averaged about 16 miles per gallon. Not what I would call efficient. What the E63 Grocery Getter is efficient at is carving up corners. In race mode, you can actually turn on something called drift mode. Drift mode means 100% of the power is going to go to the rear wheels 100% of the time. So you can go drifting the back end of this grocery getter and all of your trappings that you just purchased are going to go flying out the back window. If we flip this little knobby to sport and we push this little button here to manual, I now have manual control over the nine speed automatic. The E63 also has dynamic engine mounts similar to what you'll find in some Porsche models. They're the engine actually sits on a suspension of its own to help keep things from getting unsettled when you're driving spiritedly. So the E63 has 4MATIC, all-wheel drive, and it's electronically controlled where it can send a certain amount to the front wheels and to the rear wheels. Another really nice feature on the car is the head-up display. It's clear, it's huge, and does a fantastic job of showing useful information. For example, right now I'm looking at the tachometer, my speed, what gear I'm in, and it's reading speed limit signs. So it's telling me what the speed limit is, and then it will flash at me the speed limit sign if I'm over that speed, which it also does down here in the instrument cluster. So if we flip it over to sport, things firm up a little bit. The steering is a little heavier, suspension's a little tauter. I do wish that comfort was a little more comfortable. Even in comfort mode, this car still rides a little firmly. So there's another feature new to this car for 2021. That is something called Hey Mercedes, which works like Siri. So you can say, hey Mercedes. How may I help you? Can you set the cabin temperature to 72 degrees? I'm setting the temperature to 72 degrees. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool. The steering wheel is new. The touch sensitive stuff actually works quite well. Like here I am just sliding my finger up and down to turn up the volume, which is awesome. You can answer the phone that way. You can go to the home screen, auto stop start, turned on or off, and then the sport exhaust. And I think other than comfort mode, the sport exhaust should just be mandatory to be on in this car all the time because it sounds better. Using the little thumb buttons on the other side, you can navigate through all of these different things you can look at in your instrument cluster. And then below that is your cruise control. Speaking of cruise control, this car has basically semi-autonomous driving. All right, so I'm gonna put cruise control on here and let the Mercedes basically drive for me. Uh, 
So it's sensing everything and keeping me in the lane and it's doing a really darn good job of it. This is not a straight road. And it knows that. Eventually it will give me a warning that I should have my hands on the steering wheel and it should like, you know, I should be participating in the driving process. <laughs> it's so weird, sort of surreal, but the car does a fantastic job. And if somebody were to pull out in front of me, it would apply the brakes. Now see, I'm getting a little warning. And if I just jiggle the wheel a little bit here, hang on to it through part of the turn, then uh, I can go back to sipping my tea. So like, what do you even need a driver for? I'll tell you what you need a driver for. This four liter AMG V8 that is an absolute gem of an engine. And these paddle shifters and this nine speed multi-plate clutch thing that helps you shift really fast. I'm a diehard three pedal fan. I love clutch, shifter, so on and so forth. In a car like this, I actually like the automatic better. In stop and go traffic, where I can literally just turn the car on and let it drive me. Yeah, I kind of like the automatic. I know, I know, I should be burned at the stake for saying that. Now, because it's a twin turbo, that boost needs to come on before you're really into it. So you gotta be in boost to get that full performance potential. And there are times the last few days where I've wanted that full thrust of 627 pound feet of torque to get my wheels going. And it, you know, yeah, there it goes. So Mercedes says that full torque is available as low as 2,500 RPM. And I'm at 2,200 right now. I'm gonna back off here. I'm gonna go in manual mode and I'm gonna downshift. So now I'm at 3000 RPM. So it's sort of a slow roll on. That's with me slamming the pedal to the floor. There's nothing wrong with that unless you really wanna get around somebody or you're in traffic and you're trying to like zip zip through traffic in your really long station wagon. You gotta build the boost. You just have to build the boost in this car. But once it's there, holy shnikes. So there is sort of a dual nature character to this car. We talk about sleeper cars, cars that don't look like they have the performance potential to do what a car like this car can do. You don't think huge power, huge agility. You think huge and huge hauling capacity, which, oh my gosh, this thing has in spades. There's nice features like you open up the power lift gate and there's a button on each side from the back to drop the middle row seats. And then there's so much room in there that I could live in this car for a weekend if I had to. Which brings us to the cost of entry. The Mercedes AMG E63S wagon starts at $112,450. So, the cost of a home, this one as equipped with the nightshade package and the ceramic composite brakes and the special paint that uh, seems to be a love it or hate it feature, rings the cash register at about $145,000. So it's not a cheap car. It's quite an expensive car, actually, and it's worth it. So it's just the cost of admission to get this kind of performance and usability all in one vehicle. So the question is, a car like this, could you buy this car and skip the sports car and skip the family car? Do you get everything in one package? And to a point you do. The downside to this car, big size comes with big weight. It's not a lightweight. And that's a huge penalty. However, the all wheel drive system, the electronically controlled limited slip diff in the back that's sort of like torque vectoring really help to put the power down where you want it and where you need it. So this is a really fun car. Once you get used to it, once you get used to the size and really start dipping into the full capabilities of this car, it's really quite something else. So more power to Mercedes for building cars like this with more power.